My talk is titled um, Cloudy with a Chance of OAuth. I'm Nick Whittison. Um, you'll see me in a second. So that's me. Um, you can't quite see me on the, on the left there, but I have a fondness of hats and I'm a little bit taller um, than everyone else. So, um, so now you know some things you didn't know before. Um, what I do, I am foremost a, a uh, student at the University of Tasmania, um, say student, uh, doing my honours degree in computing um, in the field of HCI. Um, I also work for Secret Lab um, as an iOS mobile software engineer, so that's a bit of fun. Um, now, today, well, when, I, when I made the talk title, I realised that, that there was another type of cloud that came out at the same time, um, so it's not these type of clouds. Um, it's more, oh, that I'm referring to in the title, it's more um, this type of cloud. So if you haven't seen this movie, I would definitely recommend it. It's called Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and it's quite good. So if you like, um, if you like movies, then that's one for you. Um, now, today I'm going to go through a few things, um, basically what OAuth is, um, how to put a custom OAuth implementation in your application. So if you have a, a service that you have to connect to to a client, uh, for, for, so someone that you're, that you're working with, um, you have to connect to their, their custom service. Um, also about the, the major social networking services um, that are out there and what's available for you. So um, first off, I'll start with what OAuth is. Um, now OAuth is, uh, stands for Open Authentication. So um, it's, a, it's a standard of authentication um, that... Um, so, so what I should say is um, today I'm only talking about OAuth 1. Um, OAuth 2 is in the process of being finalized. It's all over the place. These sort of standards get thrown around for ages. Um, some people pick them up, some people don't. And then we end up everywhere. At the moment, Facebook, I think, is all OAuth 2. Um, Twitter is on its way to being OAuth 2. Um, but I'll talk about OAuth 1 today. It's a similar sort of principles about why you need it. Um, but basically, it's a standard of authentication um, to let you uh, move around your, your data securely. So what it does is it allows people to, um, to give access to third-party services to, or their, their, their personal, so give access to their personal resources to third-party services. So for example, if you um, use Twitter or Facebook and you have some, say on Facebook, you have some pictures, um, you want to share, you want to use your pictures in an application on your phone, um, OAuth allows you to just uh, allows Facebook to just give access to your photos to that application. Um, so if you only want to let a small set of your data um, out instead of just giving this application your password and letting them basically authenticate themselves as you, um, OAuth lets you do that. Um, so it's typically broken down into, into three different parts. So you've got you as the user. Um, you're just a guy, a guy with a device. Um, You've got your, your consumer, which is the application that either you or someone has developed, um, which is a separate entity to you. Um, and you've got your service as well. So the service is the thing that holds all the data um, and has control over all of it. With, with OAuth, you've got um, basically three uh, necessary API calls to, uh, to make uh, an OAuth login. Um, it starts with a request. Um, that request is all, and then it moves to an authentication, um, and then finally you get an access token, which you can use to access all the data. Um, the things that you get provided when you make an application, uh, when you apply for an application with one of these services, looks a little bit like this. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but basically um, you're given a consumer key and a consumer secret. Um, these are two two things that are unique to you. Um, use them to authenticate to the service. You also um, get provided with those three API calls there, um, and they're used for the, for the login process, which I'll go through in a minute. Um, now, I thought it might be, might be fun, and by fun I mean okay, to, uh, to go through just the process of applying to how to get these keys. Um, it's not immediately obvious, but um, it's not too hard either. So we'll have a little bit of a go there. All right, fun times. 
cool. So um, what you want to do is if uh, today, or what I'll do today is go through a, a Twitter one. Um, so for this one, you'll need a Twitter account. Um, and that's actually all you need. So it's not too hard. Um, just go to dev.twitter.com if you want to. Um, click on the sign in button and sign in with your account. So mine's a MacLab account. That's one of the other ones that I use. Um, and basically up in, uh, you, you'll have a whole lot of access to the Twitter API um, and, and the documentation that goes along with that. Um, there's a bit on, on OAuth in there, but I won't go into that because it's um, a bit long. So if you go up to your little profile here and click on My Applications, you'll be able to see a list of applications that, that you've created. Um, I created up a dev, one early one, a dev World one earlier before, but I'm going to create a new application up here. So you want to give your application a name um, and a description. Doesn't really matter what it is if you're, if you're not going to use it. Um, you want to give it some sort of website um, and a callback URL. And I'll tell you what those ones are a little bit later. So then you've got to sign up. You've got to agree to their um, ridiculously long EULA um, or whatever they want to call it, terms of agreement. Rules of the road. That's the the raw, raw tour? What are Wrong. All right, and so once you've done that, um, basically they give it to you straight away. So they generate those keys. Um, the the standard um, th those those OAuth um, API calls there are the standard ones that everyone gets. But those two keys are the things you'll need later on um, for your uh, for your app. So if we go back to here. Um, all right, so we've got that. Let's let's dance. Um, so some, I've seen I've seen it written down quite a few times actually. It's called the the, the OAuth dance because it does look a little bit like a dance. Um, take a jump to the left and one back and don't hit anything. Um, but I'll go through step by step with you just so you know what's going on um, and what what's actually sent across every time you um, every time you make one of these calls. So the first one there. Um, is, is started when the user wants to log in to your application or gain access to anything, really, um, that's, that's secured. So the first request that you send across um, is request to that request access URL. Um, you need to pass along that OAuth consumer key that I showed you before, as well as um, it uses cryptographic hashing um, as one of the security um, thingos it has in there. So um, you can read all about that in the, in the, um, the spec if you like, um, but you need to pass along the, the type of, um, of uh, algorithm that you want to use in there. Um, also, the signature, which I believe is the, the secret that you get from Twitter, um, you know, timestamp, uh, announce a version, um, it's just OAuth1 for this case, and a callback. Now, I, you saw before that you got, a, you got to specify your callback. Basically, what the callback is, is, is where it sends the, the client after it's done the authentication, which is around step C or D there, um, the callback is used or can be used um, for web apps to um, easily be sent back to where they started um, and to deliver the token that they get um, back to the, the consumer. So um, after that, you move on. Uh, the service provider replies with a response, which gives you a temporary auth token. So this is your initial one. Um, it's basically saying this is just some temporary stuff that you can use to to contact me back um, so I know that it's you. Um, you get a secret and the confirmed callback. After that, um, you send another request. Uh, oh, also, you'll note that, I don't know if you can see, there you've got um, dotted lines and um, unbroken lines there. So the dotted lines are ones that are sent from the consumer uh, that, that are just basically done between the computers. So from the consumer, whatever application you have, to um, the to the service. Um, and the unbroken lines there, uh, what actually happens when the user has to do something, um, they, they get directed to the service's website. So right now what happens is the user is being redirected to, say, Twitter's website and being asked to pass their credentials along. So instead of authenticating with your application, um, it's 
authenticating with Twitter, and Twitter will pass back that I know uh, he is who he says he is, um, he can have access to, to this data. Um, so uh, the request that comes back um, has a, a token and a verifier in it, so that original, that token that you got before, and a verifier stating that everything was okay or not. Um, and then the user um, makes one uh, last, uh, one last, or sorry, the consumer makes one last request with all the information it now has. So it uses the consumer key, the, the token that it got, uh, that, that temporary one, uh, the signature method, all the other stuff as well, as well as that verifier on the end to show that er all, all the authentication on the service side, so say Twitter, for example, um, went okay. And it says, you agreed to this, um, here's all my information. And what it gives back is the completed auth token and the auth token secret. So these two things are the things that you need to basically make your, um, your API, or your, your call to one of the, the OAuth um, APIs, so one of the protected APIs um, in, the, in the service. So for example, if you want to get um, from Twitter the, the timeline, the user's timeline, um, you would include these in your protected, or oh, access protected resources call, um, and that would basically give you access to whatever the user authorized um, when they clicked their, put in their password and clicked the authorize button. So that's pretty easy, um, and everyone ends up happy. So um, the, the consumer has the keys that it wants. The service um, has control over what the consumer actually has access to. So because they're actually token-based, um, the token doesn't have the same privileges as the, the original user's password. So it's not like the consumer is now, um, the, the consumer could make uh, fake calls that are outside of the bounds of what the user wanted. Um, they can only do what they've actually asked to in that OAuth call, uh, sorry, in that OAuth um, token. And in the end, the user gets the data that they want. So um, everyone ends up happy. Okay, so now you've got your token. Um, that's a happy developer there. Um, you can request anything that you've been authenticated to, as I said, um, including hamburgers. So, um, and that's, that all seems pretty complex. And so you might ask, you, you might be asking, why don't we just use HTTP? Um, one of the reasons was that limited access that I mentioned, um, and also um, because the user tr probably trusts the service that it's already signed up to more than you. Um, it doesn't know who you are. It's probably just downloaded your app. Um, I say it. Um, probably just downloaded your app, doesn't really know what's going on, it just wants access to, say, his tweet stream or something. Um, this is an example of the limited access that Twitter has. Um, basically, Twitter, I think, has three different types of access. There's read, read, write, and read, write with direct messages. So um, you can, Twitter is not very complicated, so it doesn't really need a complicated, um, a complicated set of permissions. Uh, Facebook, however, has more permissions you could poke a stick at. So, um, I won't go into Facebooks, but um, one of the other really cool things you can do, because it's token-based, the service remembers all the tokens that it's issued. Um, and if the user, for example, loses their phone or it gets stolen, um, they can revoke access to a particular device or, or application, I guess, um, which is really quite cool. So instead of having to um, delete your account or um, ban someone from the account, change your, change your password, you simply go into Facebook or Twitter, remove the, um, remove the application. Um, and it can look a little bit like, oh, if this happens to your phone, this is basically what revoking is like. Poor phone, never stood a chance. It's dead now. Applications don't work on it. Um, so that's what it actually looks like. Um, so as I was saying, you can go into Twitter, um, have a look, and you're like, oh, I've got these three applications that are authorized from my account. I don't want the DevOrt app anymore to have access to my thing. Next time the person who's stolen your phone or you goes into the, the DevOrt application you've created um, with using that consumer key, or so using that OAuth token, um, it'll just go, no, it's run out, unlucky. Um, you'll have to apply again to get a new one, um, and the user has to authorize that again. So um, that brings me to what happens if you're not using uh, one of the major um, social networking people and you're using a custom implementation of, our, uh, of, of an OAuth um, system. So 
Um, let's have a look. One, one of the, the libraries I've used a lot is called GTMOauth. Um, it's a Google Toolbox um, library. It's actually quite good. It includes the, um, the, the, the GTM uh, HTTP fetcher, um, which if you've done any API calls at all is absolutely magic. You don't have to worry about including, um, oh, change that one. You don't have to worry about including uh, any delegate calls for an SURL connection anymore. That it's all handled for you and just uh, returned. The data is returned whenever the, the API call is finished. Um, or if it errors, it gives you the error. You don't have to worry about trying to thread your own um, connections. So that's where you can get it from. Um, there's also a version for OAuth 2 available as well. So if you're using an OAuth 2 service, um, that is another way to, to do with that. Um, it contains a few different files that you have to put in. So if you're using iOS or using Mac, um, just pop in those, those files up there. And um, each one of them serves a different kind of purpose. Um, but yeah, so this is the first, um, the first thing you have to put in when you, when you want to integrate it into your application. So um, it's just a, a, a method that um, basically creates a, an authentication object, which is your application. So it uses your consumer key and your secret um, to, to make something that it uses later on to um, to populate the, uh, the request with. Um, and this, this, that one gets called in this method here, which is the sign under custom service one. Um, now, this is where you provide the, uh, the request access and authorization um, URLs into there. Now, um, there's also one for scope as well, which some, some OAuth um, providers use scope as a, a way of setting permissions. Um, it depends on um, whether that's done service side or on your side. For Facebook, for example, you can specify particular permissions. Say you want access to um, send emails from their basic uh, information and um, to manage their pages or something. Um, Facebook has a way of doing that. Um, and you can also set the callback manually. Now, for some OAuth ones, it's recommended. Also, I think for most OAuth um, services, it's recommended you set a callback when you create the uh, create the uh, the call um, because uh, you may need something different than that's what's specified on the, the server. So the second part there is um, creating the authentication window, which basically brings up a um, a web view um, for in iOS and and I haven't actually tried the Mac one. I'm really an iOS developer, so that's all I've used it for. But um, brings up a, a, a bit of a web view and directs them to um, say Twitter or uh, whatever's um, web page that's um, listed in the, I think it's the authorized URL that gets sent there. So, um, and then you display that on the screen, however you like, if you're using a um, navigation controller or, a, um, or just want to use a modal view. Um, and this one here is what happens when it's finished. So it'll say, it'll, it'll basically go and do its thing and say, I either got an auth token or I didn't. Um, and you can handle it from there. If you, if you did get an auth token and you've succeeded, you can just move on to the next, um, to the next window. You've got your, your token, you store that um, in, your, in your data storage um, or in your uh, in its user default um, if you want to as well. I think you can do that. Or the keychain. I think it comes with the instructions on the website on how to store it in your keychain, which is what I use. And um, if it's failed, you can throw up an error to the, uh, the window to the user or something or get them to try again. So. Um, this is actually as easy, uh, as hard as it gets for doing your own OAuth um, signing calls. So once that's all done and you have your tokens, to sign a request is just that one line of code. So you create your API call um, by making your NS mutable URL request and you seed that with whatever you want. So for Twitter, for example, you give it the, the, the key value pairs for whatever you want and then you just call it. Um, you call the, the auth object and pass in um, the request. It signs it with all the relevant um, OAuth tokens that it needs, um, and then you basically send it off um, using the, the fetcher, um, which is that API call handler. Um, yeah, it's kind of easy. It's not actually too bad. For something that um, we had to do a dance for before, this is pretty much taken away most of the complexity. So if you're struggling trying to understand what OAuth is, I would say have a look at the basics of OAuth 
but don't, unless you really need to, don't bother with trying to figure out how it works because it's so complex that you'll spend hours staring at something and it doesn't do you any good. If you've got software like this that's already written, use it. Um, that being said, if it doesn't work, that's when you have a problem. So if you're using a custom service, no doubt they'll want some sort of custom experience for their, um, for their thing. So they may not want a web page or they may not want um, specific elements of, the, um, of that uh, web view that gets displayed. So um, it's always good to read and see how it works if you need to. So they're, they're broken down into three main parts. They're listed up there. And um, that for one of the projects that I worked on, um, I had to spend a lot of time looking at how the, the sign-in object worked and um, eventually how the authentication object worked um, just to get this custom um, sending of, of data across. So um, it didn't take too long, just a bit of, uh, a bit of staring at code. All right, so I'll move on to the, the last section, um, which is all about um, the major social networks and what's available for you um, with, with their, their OAuth systems. So first off is the, the Facebook SDK. Um, it, it uses, the, if you go to developer.facebook or developers.facebook.com, um, you get a page that looks a little bit like that. It's fairly friendly. Um, I actually quite like their Graph API. It's, um, they've got a really cool uh, online um, sort of tester where you can figure out exactly what data you get back without having to actually launch an app and put in a, a URL and all that sort of stuff. Um, you can get the, 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 the Facebook, uh, the iOS SDK for Facebook is actually open source. You can get it from GitHub. Um, and it's actually dead easy to use. So it's even less complicated than doing your own one. Um, so you basically start off by making a Facebook object. Um, you give it your app ID. So you create an app just like you've done with the, with the Twitter application there. Um, and the extra little bit of code after that just checks to see whether you already have a, uh, a active um, OAuth token with, um, with the Facebook service. So if you've already got one that's stored in your app, you don't need to get the user to authenticate again. You've already got one, so you just go straight ahead and, um, and go from there. But if you don't, so if the session's not valid, you um, set up a whole bunch of permissions, which is what I was talking about before. That line can get really, really long if you want um, to have more and more permissions. There is a, um, a thing that I read that basically says there's an inverse relationship between how many permissions you ask and how many people actually authenticate with your app. So the more you ask, the less, you'll actually, less users you actually get. Um, unless you really, really need something, don't ask for it. It's just, um, it's just not worth um, people turning away from your stuff because they don't want access, they don't want you to have access to um, your friend's birthdays or something, I don't know. Um, and then you basically pass along. Uh, with, with Facebook as well, it actually tries three different ways to authenticate you. Um, the first one's kind of nifty. If you have the Facebook application installed on your phone, it tries to get the OAuth token from that. So calling Facebook Authorize will actually um, launch the, the Facebook app into the foreground, put yours in the background, and, um, and it'll just try and authorize it through there, then launch yours when it's finished. Um, you need to set up a, a URL scheme um, it's not too hard. Um, there's, there's a, on the Facebook website, there's a whole tutorial for it. Um, the second one, if you don't have the Facebook app already installed, uh, it tries to take you um, either to the Facebook website in the Safari browser, where you can log in and, um, and provide your stuff through there, or it throws up a Facebook Connect dialog inside your actual app. Um, and so they're authenticating to Facebook anyway. So it's kind of cool. It tries the most convenient one first and then moves down the ranks depending on what's actually installed on the phone. Um, what have we got next? So this is what happens after it's finished. It just stores the, uh, stores the defaults into the, if you've got a, a valid authorization, you probably want to keep that um, for later. So when they launch your app again, they don't have to authorize again. Um, also in that methods where you'd call whatever happens next. So you'd load the next few. Um, once, you, once you have your Facebook, um, your authorized Facebook tokens, you don't need to do any more on your login view. Um, and then that's how you actually call a Facebook Graph API. So you tell the Facebook objects that you've got, um, I want this graph, and set the delegate to yourself. There's a delegate call which returns um, when, it's, when it's finished. And um, you just basically go onto the Facebook API, pick out the ones that you want. If you have access to it, it'll return data. If you don't, it'll return an error. Um, and yeah, it's pretty easy. So 
All you do is you, you download the SDK, drop the relevant um, files into your app, and you're done. Um, so Twitter is the other major one. Um, and there's a, there's a similar one. It's not made by Twitter. Um, it's made by a couple of different people. Um, but it's not quite as comprehensive as the, as the Facebook uh, SDK, but this one's still pretty cool. Um, that's the, the dev, Twitter dev site that you saw before. Um, it's got a whole bunch of information on everything there. Um, it's, a lot, it's a lot less complicated than Facebook's API, um, just because obviously Twitter's a lot less complicated. So that is where you can get it from. Um, and this is what it looks like. So um, you start off by creating a Twitter engine, um, which is similar to the Facebook um, object that you made before. Um, you give it your consumer key and your consumer secret, which is um, uh, what you got when you created that app, uh, app inside the, the dev Twitter uh, website. And you just tell it to go away and authorize itself. Um, it'll send back um, what it's done. So it, it'll uh, basically bring up a a modal window, um, get the person to log into their Twitter account, and then return with yes or no whether they authorized your app. And that's how you make an API call using that engine. So um, yeah, it's not too hard. They have all the, all the because, because there's only a limited amount of API calls, it doesn't have, um, it's not so extensive as the graph um, Facebook one. They've pretty much got all of the, uh, all the different types of calls you can make um, with a whole bunch of different parameters in there, um, all, all inside the, that, um, that framework for you. So, yeah. Um, I was a little bit sick today, so I'm not gonna do my, my code demo, because I'll probably fail. Um, and I'm just about to die, and if I kill over, that's fine. Um, but I'll show you my endpoints. So, um, there's a few, a few endpoints that I have. Um, that's one from the OAuth website. Um, that's one of Tony's endpoints. Um, I wish Tony was still here. But basically, you want to, um, once, once you know about, about OAuth and how it works, it becomes a lot less daunting just to, just to get into something. So if you're, if you're scared about um, how to make a Twitter app or a Facebook app, or you want to put that into your application as something extra, don't worry about it. It's not too hard. Just use either one of those or have a bit of a search around on the net um, to find a, a framework that does everything for you, because it's not worth stressing yourself over something so small. Um, Use, if you use a standard service, as I said, um, look around for those. Um, with a custom service, um, if you have to, to modify it to get what you do, what you want, it might take a little bit of time, but um, all I did was read the code, um, take a few hours, uh, read, just go through the stuff, follow the flow of, the, um, of that, that dance that I showed you before. It's, it's usually apparent in the code um, how it goes from piece to piece and adds all the stuff. Um, Xcode's got a wonderful feature where you hold down um, command or whatever, and you can click on a method call, it takes you to the definition, so you can find out what it's calling, and go down the tree and um, have a look and see how things work. Um, and be prepared to do a bit of customization. Um, what else do I have to say? Um, I guess, yeah, UX is, UX is everything. So, uh, Josh mentioned this morning that a user doesn't want to know what the, the tech behind something is. Um, they they, want, they basically want to get to their goal of whatever they were trying to do. So if they download a Twitter application, they don't want to um, know that they're going through all these different stages of the OAuth dance. They just want to sign in and have their thing shown on the screen. Um, so if you're using a custom one, a custom OAuth thing, um, make the user experience as, as nice as possible. If you don't have to use a web view, don't. OAuth 2 is um, centered around using, um, is centered around uh, mobile applications and desktop applications, so you no longer have to use browsers. Um, have a look at that as well um, for the services that actually have that available. Um, and you won't always have a monkey translator to, um, to do the work for you, so just design better. Um, if, you give an app, if you have an app and you give it to a few of your friends and, and they, they look at stuff and they're moving around stuff on the screen and they don't really know what they're doing, ask them why. Um, say what's what's confusing about this. Get them just just get some user feedback on on why your application doesn't work or why the flow is, is a little bit weird to start off with. Um, there's a few useful links here. Um, that's the the Twitter and the Facebook one. The OAuth um, website has a whole bunch of information as well as that that nifty picture. Um, if you want to see it again, 
um, as well as that's the, the RFC for the OAuth spec. Um, it's quite a long document and it's not at all exciting. I think the only fun bit is when someone called, like a mythical person called Jane is referenced and she has a car, so <sighs> you can read it if you want. Um, it's got more on the, the actual um, cryptography, cryptography side of things, um, which is not necessarily interesting um, if you don't um, need to, to know about that all the time. Um, and yeah, thanks. <laughs>